Hello friends, John Willard here. If you would hit the subscribe button to our wonderful CNA TV. You're watching From the Heart with John Willard. Hi friends, John Willard here. A friend sat in a crowd waiting to hear from a storyteller. Next to him was a gray bearded farmer type in overalls. As an African American man got up to speak, the man next to my friend turned to his wife and whispered in an irritated tone some bad connotations. My friend mentally dared him to say it again. Instead, he folded his arms and started examining the construction of the building's roof. The African-American man began telling his story about a lonely night during the 1960s, deep in the heart of Mississippi. He and the six other activists feared the dangers they would face by marching the next morning. He described how they stared into the campfire as one of them began to sing. The singing calmed their fears. His story was so real, my friend could hear the fear and he could see the light of the campfire. Then the speaker asked the audience to sing along with him, and they did. Swing low, sweet chariot vibrated out of their throats like a big 400 pipe organ. Next to my friend, the big farmer man, he sang too. He saw a tear roll down his rough red cheek. Now, if an African American activist could touch the heart of an ultra-conservative racist farmer. Well, the magic of influence is less in what we say and more in how we say it and who we are. The secrets of storytelling and influence reside in the creative side of you that understands the nebulous truths about dogs, stories, and influence. Storytelling is not limited to fairy tales or traditional folk tales. It's a way to mine deep down and touch the tender heart of the most defensive adversary, like it did the racist farmer. Everyone has a heart, and that's why I say, enlarge my heart with a story and change me by the characters I meet there. I frequently use my own story and myself as an example. I've tried to minimize the word I, but storytelling is personal. The best stories will be about things that happen to you. Friends, have you ever wondered heredity, or environment, which influenced you most? It's a very interesting question. Well, 
The gentleman poet won't let you down. Let me share. Heredity and environment shaped to make me one. One became my guiding star. The other became my sun. The first one gave me life and the second taught me to live it. One gave me a need for love and the other was there to give it. One gave me perspective, the other gave me a name. One gave me talent, the other gave me aim. One gave me emotions and the other calmed my fears. One saw my first smile. The other dried my tears. And now you ask me through my tears the age-old question through the years. Heredity or environment, which are you a product of? Neither, my darling, neither. Just two different kinds of love. Love connects your heart with the heart of another person and creates pathways through which your love can flow. The wonderful thing about practicing random kindness is that each day you will be presented with thousands of opportunities to do so. A car will be waiting to be led in your lane of the highway. Someone will drop something and need help picking it up. You have children that need to be told they're special or a mate who needs to be told he or she is loved. Friends, who could use a one-minute phone call just to say you treasure them? Dogs and cats who crave a hug, a scratch, or a kiss? And hundreds of strangers to whom a smile would mean that they're not invisible. I heard the pitiful meow of a cat who sounded like it was crying. When I looked in a dumpster, I saw her, a scrawny calico cat that was more skin and bones than fur. She looked like she hadn't eaten in weeks and was shaking from fear and hunger. I knew that if I took her from the dumpster and fed her, that she would be mine. But my heart broke as I thought of her starving. She was terrified and she had been chased away one too many times. And she didn't trust that I wouldn't hurt her as well. Suddenly, I thought you showed her what kindness was for the first time in her life. She will always know that she was loved. Love is never wasted. I sit with my dogs in my lap and marvel at nature's exquisite way of saying good night. And then I think to myself, it will always be like this here, even when I'm no longer alive to witness it. The same fog will appear at sunset on hot summer days and fill the night with a mist. The same trees will cast shadows across the lawn. The same moon will rise through above the clouds painting the valley with a silver with its light. 
All of this will be here and I'll be gone. My dog shift on my lap to get a better view. I witness the glorious spectacle of creation, the privilege and blessing of being alive, to be fully present right here, right now, to love, to be grateful, to celebrate life. Many things will catch your eye, but only a few will catch your heart. Pursue those. My final thought, we can learn these things from our dog, to listen without judgment, to love unconditionally, and to guard faithfully the interest of those who care for you, and to be faithful unto death. You can reach me on Twitter at John Willard 47. This is John Willard from the farm.